get everything done yes. without uh, panicking and trusting in the Lord. All right. What happened was uh, this morning, I found my wife. <laughs> <laughs>
Also, um, and also, um, I've been getting calls from my maple too. Ooh. So, um, the, the library, they be um, talking to me, walking, walking, about, um, they be seeing me read books. Yeah. So, we, we have like a meet and stuff about books. What kind of books that we read in? <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Okay, that concludes our testimony service. And now, Amen.
I, I want us to think about that. You know what saints too? Today too is a celebration for the church. Y'all believe it? The church overall. Today is unofficially the birthday of the church. Yeah, every church that's a Christian church today is unofficially their birthday. Yes, it is. Y'all look at me like, what is this man talking about? There was no we ain't today either. Now, but the thing about it is, is this. You want to know why? It's the day of Pentecost. 50 days after Easter. And if y'all follow the story, 40 days he ascended. 10 days later, he sent what? A comforter. And that is when, they, in Acts chapter 2, when the spirit, Ruha, the wind came upon them. And they were able to hear the word of God each in their own respective language. And the reason that God sent back a comforter, guess what it was? Because he knew that by our own might we could not do what he did. That's why we have a comforter. Because the apostles, much like many of us, had a problem. They believed, but they did not commit. You know that's what's wrong with a lot of our relationships. I believe I got a wife, but I ain't committed to acting like it. Mm, I'm not talking about me now because I'm scared. But, oh God, I'm my wife. But I want you to know something. On the birthday, unofficial birthday of the church, when the Spirit came, it wasn't just about tongues. People always give it that. Ooh, I can speak Russian. I can speak Swahili. I can speak German. I can speak broken black English. I can speak this and that. That ain't what it was about. It was about ministering to people where they were to get them to where God needed them to be. It was about giving people courage. It was about establishing backbones. It was about giving you the ability. It was about giving you the strength. Because you know what? If you're doing the work of God, you're going to run across it with tenuous, honorary, angry, angry, but you know what? You can't act like them. You must be an ambassador of God. And if you don't have the spirit of God, you can't stay calm in front of a fool. If you don't have the spirit of God, you won't argue with the fool, and y'all gonna be fools together. Instead of being a child of God, that is allowing the Holy Spirit, that comfort that will come inside of you. To motivate and mold you and shape you. Because this is happy birthday. Hallelujah time for the church. Because from there the apostles were able to go out and take the gospel to the four corners of the world. He decided to use the to take the gospel to the four corners of your house. Your apartment. Your job. Your community. Your neighborhood. Your street. Wherever you live. Oh, this birthday is a great birthday. We are great that Jesus came back. But guess what? He sent what we needed so that we could live in this sensei world. And I'm glad about it. I'm so glad about it. Oh, I'm so glad that God sent back a couple so I, I, I can be saved and be a missionary and evangelist of Christian that is standing on the promises. That no matter what the world does, my God is in control. Amen. Amen. Amen, saints. I just thought I would tell you that y'all will be birthday. Because our church anniversary is only about 10 weeks away. So that means you need to start saving now about $10 a week to be on time for the deadline to get your ticket. So we can get this celebration going. Because I tell you what, we plan on having a Holy Ghost good time at this celebration. Because I know myself, my life has been greatly changed by meeting a man about this high. A man about this high. That I'm even quoting him myself sometimes subconsciously dealing with people. Somebody came off and told me about, you know, I did this, this. I said, boy, I've been your age. You ain't been old, Lord. <laughs> I said, uh, it's amazing the impact that a godly person can have on you. And we don't respect his memory, Beko's, and the founder of this church memory on that day. So I'm telling you this for you cheapskates who buy weed, weed, cigarettes, and Coca-Cola, and Pepsi, and everything else. The job go in y'all pockets, knock out the lint, and don't buy that junk this week. And start putting the money towards getting your ticket because we need to be there. We need to celebrate the things that are going to happen. You know what? If we was Jewish, all the Jews would be there. 
if we was Muslim, y'all of them would be there. But y'all black folks got a reason to do everything for what you're supposed to be doing, because you want to do what you want to do, how you want to do it, the way you want to do it. And you can spend money on everything other than what you shouldn't be spending money on. Besides the fact, you get to get a meal out of it. That's right. And you know all of y'all can't cook. Some of y'all cook really good. Some of y'all even make up as your best friend. And you know what? It's a good thing. We gonna have a good time. So we expect to see everybody there. Everybody there. Just like when I get to heaven. I demand to see every last one of you all. I demand to see you when we get there. And you know what? I'm gonna be able to sing and y'all ain't gonna be able to stop me. I'm gonna be able to do it because I'm gonna be singing praises to my Lord. But you know what, saints of God, is me. I don't want to be belaborous and put this on, but I want to tell y'all, we should have put some, we probably should have given a happy birthday for the church. Don't do it now, brother. But I want y'all to think about that. That's a great thing because the church started all because of faith. And in close, I want you to know about this. Faith is not a head knowledge. Faith is not quoting scriptures. Faith is not coming to church. Faith is not bringing people to church. Faith is not reading the Bible. Faith is not having colloquialisms where you say, what would Jesus do? I'm blessed and highly favored. No, you might be highly flavored. That's not what faith is. Faith is the way you live your life. Faith is how you communicate and interact with other people. Faith is what people can say about you when you leave the room. Because they have been around somebody that has been tattooed by the Holy Spirit. Faith is not you being up at night worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. Because anxiety says that God does not exist. You have no right to worry. And you have no right to stay fearful long. Because everything is done in God's time. The way he wants it done. And we can't rush him, and we sure can't make him do nothing. And he ain't say you got to like it. Because some of us in here old enough remember when we had to take castor oil and Fletcher's Pastoria, and we had to take cod liver oil. And you know that when your mama didn't get you that, you really wanted to fight him, but because you wanted to live to see another day, and you knew that there were death consequences associated, you sucked it up. And they even got brew and tried to put flavor in it. Garbage is still garbage. No matter what you put in it. And we live. And we better for it. And we probably the strongest generation there will ever be. Yeah. The same is true with Christianity. You ain't going to like everything. But everything is good for you. It might not go in easy. But when God is in you. Oh Lord. It ain't nothing you can't do. Amen, saints. Amen. Amen, saints. Amen, saints. We need to worship God today. And as we continue on with this worship service, we're going to call forth the announcement clerk. All three inches of her up here. She's been gone for my miss. No, no, you still phone nine. You still phone nine, girl. You own that. Beyonce, Madonna, none of them can touch you, girl. I don't know what you're talking about. This universe ain't got nothing on you. And she even pretends she's going to work some days. And they didn't look good. Pastor got jokes. All day. All day. fundraiser on Friday for the 60th church anniversary. It was a success. Amen. I didn't get any. <laughs> but it was good. Time, I heard it was very, very good. Yes, very good. Yeah, yes. that, was, that was a good make every shrimp. <laughs> Did you cook it? Now, I see. I couldn't do nothing. I mean, at graduation, I was tired all day. I didn't see it. <laughs> Bible study on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. 
and I'm happy to say that she doesn't come into the sanctuary, but my niece Dawn Foster, who lost her mother, my sister, last summer, joined Bible study. So I am grateful to that. That should have been my testimony this morning, but I forgot about it. Women's Day has been postponed until September of this year. More information will follow. Well, I'm sorry, forthcoming closer to the date. The Deacon Board will have a movie night on Friday, June 7. Invite families in to come out to enjoy a great movie. Fellowship and fun is open to the community. Please bring your lawn chairs. What is the movie? Anybody know? What's the movie? You know, it's a surprise. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. Okay. Probably the Ten Commandments. <laughs> no, we're going to do that six-hour movie. <laughs> We're going to get out of here at 3 o'clock in the morning watching that one. weekend, Sunday, or it'll be Saturday, June 8th, and Sunday, June 9th. Theme is the whole armor of God. In today's society, we need the whole, the whole armor of God to make it. Ephesians 6, 11, 13. And time is from 1 to 5. Game truck, craft tables, games, contests, and raffles. Community family event open to all. Fellowship with our community family. Chairpersons are Sister Brandy Myers and Sister D'Angelo Johnson. We're looking for donations of hot dogs, chips, cookies, water, soda, hugs, and of course your participation. Prayerless Mother Ann Bradley, Evangelist Patricia Page, Deacon Robert McCoy, Reverend Johnny Allen, Sister Diane Hudson, and the Player Reed family. Please ask that everyone pray daily at 7, corporate prayer for our church, our Christian Unity Baptist Church community, city, state, and nation. Do we have any visitors this morning? Some of y'all ain't seen before, but it's all right. We still love you. <laughs> yeah. It looks like every face is familiar. All right. Um, enjoy the rest of the service. And um, oh, I'm sorry. One more. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention. My cousin Shakira Foster Fry. Doctor. Doctor. That's why I say that. I don't need that all time. No, Dr. Shakira Foster Fry received her doctorate in clinical psychology. Okay, this is an uh, invitation to serve graduation, the senior class of South High School announces commencement exercises Tuesday evening, May 21st, 2024, um, 6.30 p.m. Connor Palace Theater, 1013 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio. Admission by ticket only. Sir Delon Moss. Amen. Amen. doctor and people graduating and all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah. Because you know what? The society tries to pigeonhole our children and lead us to believe they ain't doing. We got mm -hmm. good things, great things going on over here. Yeah. 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 All right? Yeah. Church this side of all this education we got in here. Now, I know yeah. I say education. Right. Oh, y'all go there and correct me. Education. Ain't nothing but God. You know what? Fruit don't fall too far from the tree. If you got a good tree, you can get good fruit. Right. Amen? Amen. 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 So with all that being said, saints of God, I'm going to belabor the point. 
because I want to get to the man of the hour today, Minister Joe Ray, who's going to bring the word of God. And let's get ready to uh, receive all that God has given us as it's time for offering time. And know this, saints of God, as Brother Foster would say, no, you can't rob God. We all stop. None of you in here do that. Give unto God. I know this person is a testimony. My wife and I, we first got married. She had a job, make more money than me, and shut down. And you know what? We bought a house, had two brand new cars. And I went to work, and they gave me more hours. And you know what? We managed to live without her working for almost a year. God will take care of you if you do what God commands and tells you to do. If you are precious in his sight, if he knows every hair on your head, God knows what your needs are. So as the ushers in the financial committee come forward, come unto God and give God all that you can in the matter of his name to show that you're grateful for all your tithes and offerings. And if you're online, you can give the cash out. Dollar sign C U B C give. Dollar sign C U B C give. Or old school mail. We take checks, money orders, cash and checks. All P O Box 18081. Cleveland Heights, Ohio 44118. P O Box 18081. Cleveland Heights, Ohio 44118. On Cash App right now. Dial into your phone while you're listening and hit Cash App. Dollar sign C U B C G. As we 
bow our heads. Heavenly Father God, we just want to come with, to you, thanking you for all that you have done and all that you have yet to do, Father God. We thank you for allowing us to come and celebrate you, Father, by joining together in this church on Broadway, Father God. Hey God, we just want to thank you for just everything, just being an awesome God at the forefront of our lives, Father God, and as the head of our households, Father. Father God, we just want to ask for forgiveness for all sins that are committed and have not yet been committed, Father God. We just want to, you know, ask for your precious mercy for, for each of us, Father. And Father God, I, I just want to thank you for just showing the miracles, Father God. You know, you, during testimony service, you... You know, I know what it's like to lose a mother, and it's that hole in your heart, Father. And those who have not experienced it, they may not know yet, but I hope that that day is long off. But those who have lost their mother, it's that hole, Father. And it takes a long time for that hole to mend. Um, and I just want to thank you for just being the comforter and the, the person. And, uh, just allowing you to be leaned on by those in need, Father. Father God, I just want to thank you for um, keeping the family safe that was lost for a bunch of And Father, and just to see the miracle how by praying and believing in you, that, you know, I remember Sister Foster, she had a pain and then all of a sudden it's gone, Father. And that's nothing but you. And our very first lady, Mother Nickerson, yeah, she says that she has something to guide you there for her, Father God, with every every leg that she puts on for her hands, Father God, everything, you're there, and you're telling her, you know what, you can do this, and I just thank you for all of it, and I thank you for the testimonies that are allowing people to grow in your faith, and Father God, as I've seen in this lifetime, being a Christian is, is, is hard, um, in engineering, we have this thing called stress, we want to but as a Christian, we know that stress is going to come. But if I believe in you, if I have faith, if our stress is measured as a hundred and first, my child, being a Christian, it go it increases with every day, with every time that we're being tested. But it's through faith, God, that we are strong and examples for who you want us to be. And Father God, we do not know who we are in front of who is watching. Thank you for the pastors that are inspired by you for the word of God. 
all of us here, Father. And we just pray that each word or something in the sermon that is said touches each and every one of us this morning, Father God. Because each of us are going through something different. It's not the same, but it's something different. But it's specifically designed for us. And once we're victorious, it's called a testimony. Father God, and it's just so, it's wonderful to be in the comfort of Christians, Father God, to know that, you know, together, like in Sunday school, together we were brainstorming. We took the book and then we decided to just talk outside of the book and just brainstorm to think and, and we all came together with the same conclusion. Revelation is a book for interpretation. However, each person is up to its own interpretation that we all understand is different. And Father God, we want to continue to be shepherds, but continue to be lights in the community. Right now, we have children that cannot even tie their children's shoes. We have children and parents with no direction. And if one of you is in a position to be a light, make no mistake, let your light shine, Father. Let, just show these people because our community is dying and I'm, I'm looking at it. I, I see it. I'm on the ground floor. We need Christians. We need real Christians. We don't need the Sunday Christians. And if, no, if you're not up for the job, please just tap out, because this is a very serious thing that we're going through. Father God, I just want to pray for the armor of strength to go out in the door. And Father God, I just want to continue to lift this up in your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Give me Amen. Amen.
It says, before I frame you in the wall. Okay, I'm sorry. Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1, verse 5. We need to have a say amen. 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 I know we don't go to Jeremiah too often. <laughs> it's a good book. Amen. Amen. But Jeremiah, uh, first chapter, verse 5. Oh, I'll still hear praise this term. I'll wait. Amen. 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 I mean, I'm so used to technology where everybody just punches in. I'm sorry. Chapter 1, verse 5. Everybody with me? Amen. 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 So Jeremiah 1, verse 5. said, before, I'm going to be reading the King James Version. Okay. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Okay. Amen. You may Amen. 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 As a title I would like to use, everybody is somebody. Before I go into the sermon, Dear Heavenly Father, I'd like to ask that you just stop by, Lord. Say thank you, Lord, for allowing me to have this opportunity to preach your word. Lord, I ask that you use me as a vessel, Lord, to reach your people, Lord. If there's anything that is, look me over, if there's anything that's contrary to your will, Lord, I ask that you remove it, Lord. If there's anything that will keep these people from being able to hear your word, keep you from being able to hear my prayer, Lord, I ask that you take that and bind it and that you cast it into the sea of forgiveness, Lord, Lord. Lord, I ask that you forgive me of all sins known and unknown, Lord. I ask that you just empty me out, wash me clean the snow, Lord, so that you might pour your Holy Spirit into me so that I might pour out to the people, Lord. I ask that everything that I do be a reflection of you, Lord, so that they don't see me, but they see you, Lord. I don't want anything that I do or say to be in vain or for my glory, Lord, but only so that you might receive the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, with that being said, like I said, everybody is somebody. So in today's world, we have a tendency to, we want to put labels on everything. Yeah. Say, including people. Say, yeah. call it what it really is. We like to judge. Yes. We call ourselves, we're very judgmental. Mm-hmm. And I hate to say it, but we as Christians are the worst. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so we have a name for everyone. For example, we have an unwed mother. We have a name for that young lady. Mm-hmm. So we also have a name for that young man that's nowhere to be found. So, but most of all, we even have a name for that innocent child. In polite circles, we'll call it illegitimate. I want you to stop and think about that for a minute. Think about that word, illegitimate. Who are we and what right do we have to call anything that God created illegitimate? Yes, say that, say that. And I know you say God created. Yes, God created. It wasn't by accident that that mother and father got together. Although when we have an unplanned pregnancy, a lot of people will say, oh, it was an accidental pregnancy, or it was a surprise. I got news for you. God don't make mistakes. And nothing surprises the Lord. So it may have been a surprise to you. God already knew. He said, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. So that means he had a plan for you. You were predestined to be here. So that makes you special. Mm-hmm. All right. That makes you somebody. Yes. Mm-hmm. And what I'm saying is, never let anyone take that away from you. You are somebody. Yes. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times we have people that will beat us down mm-hmm. and destroy our self-esteem. And said, because God created us, going back to the scripture, said God created you with a purpose. Mm-hmm. And the Bible, the scripture says, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. What does he come to steal, kill, and destroy? Your purpose. He doesn't want you to achieve the purpose that God has for you. All right. All but right. every one of us, from before conception, God put a purpose in us. All right. So, you know, we might not realize that purpose. Some people might realize that purpose at 20, 30, 40, 50. Some people may never realize that purpose. You say, Minister, well, if it's in all of us, why, do we, why does it not materialize? Why do we not realize that purpose? And the quick and easy answer is, some of us never realize God. Mm-hmm. All right. 
I'm going to repeat that. I said the easy answer is some of us never realize God. We never realize who God is, the power of God. The word says, seek ye the kingdom of God first, and all other things will be added unto you. But the problem is, we want to seek everything but God. We want to seek our pleasures, and we want to seek what's fun and what we enjoy doing, rather than being obedient to the word. Amen. And a lot of times, going back... We let people, well, before I go to that, I'm going to talk about this. A lot of times we have assassins in the church. Let's see, what I mean by assassins is people that assassinate your purpose. So we have three types of killers I'd like to talk about as far as killers of purpose. We have the assassin, the first degree murder, and the accidental murder. Now I'm going to talk about the Christian assassin first. So, because this is the one that Satan has contracted to come in and destroy the church. Mm-hmm. So you know the ones, the ones that are so heavenly bound that they know earthly good. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't really thank you, Jesus, when you just say hello. You can't get out of word before they quoted 15 different scriptures to you. Right. I know that ain't nobody in here. I'm not talking about anybody in here. I'm just saying we all know somebody yes. like that. Oh, I forgot to give my disclaimer. Um, my mom has nothing to do with what I'm preaching. <laughs> Please let her come back to y'all's church. It's all me. I don't know any of y'all pastor who didn't give me any special message to preach about anybody in here. So don't be looking at the pastor's side, buddy. If y'all can be mad at anybody, be mad at me, but I'm old. Give me a head start to the car. <laughs> all right. That being said, oh, and when I say y'all, you, once again, not talking about anybody in here, but we all know somebody. Like I said, I don't want no problems. <laughs> so we know that the power of life and death is in the tongue. So, and we have people that, like I say, are Christian assassins. They will sit here and it will be, we're so judgmental with our moral compass that we forget that while we're judging, Everybody based on our morals, that we fall short of God's morals. The Bible says, Let he that is lost sin cast the first stone. It also says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So who am I to stand here and tell you about what you're doing wrong? Amen. Amen. Who am I to say, Oh, you know, Pastor, you know, uh, Deacon so and so, he was doing a little bit of success. You know, so y'all can think you ought to have him up there, you know, Pastor, because, uh, so, but at the same time, how would I know Deacon so and so was coming out the bar last night if I wasn't by the bar? Really? Well, I'm just saying. So, so we forget when we point the fingers, three pointing back out. So you will do so, and there's a lot of people that in the church are so devious and do so many different things. You have a lot of people that don't come to church now. Because of the church folk. Amen. So you have people that are what are called church hurt. They've been to the church and they've been let down and they've been disappointed. Although it's funny that a lot of those people that are church hurt are bar hurt. Oops, did I say that? I don't know. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> but, anyway. but you know what? I, I actually heard something on that though. It said because when they went to the church, the church, the church criticized them. They, their skirts was too too short. Their clothes was too dirty. They talked a certain way. Said, but when they went to that bar, the bartender never had a word to say about their appearance, how they looked, or how they spoke. So they just let them keep coming to where they were, were comfortable. But like I said, whereas we, with our moral compass, judging people, I've been to some churches. I ain't gonna name your name, but I've been in some churches where, oh, you're an unwed mother, you can't sit up front, you gotta sit in the back. Oh. Been to some churches where, oh no, you're not dressed appropriately enough to come in, not sit here, not even come into our building. Yeah. We won't have any, we can't have anybody dressed like you come in. Yeah. But they told me that the church was the hospital, that was the place that you needed to be. Oh, the Bible says, come as you are. So you come as you are and God to make the change. That's what I was always taught. But we as Christians, we have a tendency to look down our nose on people that aren't of a certain standard. Like we got. 
I should have came with the other disclaimer. I'm sorry, I'm not as charismatic or as uh, articulate as the, the doctor, Terry Webb. But if you let me go, I, if y'all stay with me, I can have a word from the Lord. I promise you. I promise you. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. So, I'm going to give y'all more until I give y'all the other disclaimer. The quieter y'all are, the longer I go. Somebody that was narcissistic, somebody that just didn't care what they say, how they say it, or how it lands. Because and with some people, they're just mean and nasty in spirit. And my intention is to say whatever I got to say to hurt you, demean you, make you feel less than, and really it's because I want to control you and try to tear you down so that I can have that control over you. Amen. I'm the only one to know anybody like that. Many of you all like that. I'm taking the job of being quiet, just reminiscing. Because I know we've all had a situation where we've dealt with somebody like that. Say so the situation where you're in an argument with somebody and they'll pick the most heinous, nasty thing to say. So they, know, they know that you just lost the love and that your mother just left. And the first thing they say, that's why your mama wasn't no good. Like, really? Why do you got to go there? Why do you want to hurt me? 
to that extent. You know, what, what reaction are you trying to get out of me? You understand what I'm saying? So why are you trying to trick me into something? <laughs> Say, deep, watch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but we have those people that they intentionally I'm trying to figure out how I want to say this not get in any trouble here keep it 100 we have those people and they have you they don't have, do not have your best interests at heart they have no intention of caring about you under the guise of the fact that they love you I was telling um, Pastor earlier, I worked in the, I volunteered two years at the Department of Corrections doing mentoring and uh, facilitating classes. And what I came across was a lot of the young men that were in there were so beat down emotionally mm -hmm. from hearing, you stupid, yeah. you, you dumb, you yeah. just like your dad. You ain't gonna never be nothing. He wasn't nothing. You ain't gonna be nothing. Like I said, those words take root. Yes, it does. They grow. Yes. And then you're wondering why <coughs> this child is out there doing yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. Because this is what you made. Yeah. You created this with your words. It was the same when I was coming up that words hurt harder than a fist. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I know as a child, personally, I would rather my mother whoop me than sit down and talk to me. Yeah. Right. Honestly, because that woman gonna be over with. I'm gonna take this beat and I'm gonna hurt, and it's gonna be over with. Amen. But my mother knew me, and I'm a mama's boy. We all know this. But my mother knew exactly where to go to hurt me. Say so she would sit down and she would talk to me with such love and kindness. And I would feel so guilty by the time she got finished. <laughs> You don't make sure. Uh, but also some of the good days now. When you ain't gonna pretend my I love you, but I gotta tell them too. Uh, there was also uh, days where I was everything but a child of God. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the thing is she balanced that with love. Yeah. What I'm saying is you have these people that aren't there committing intentional murder with their tongue. There is no balance. My, this, my whole purpose is to destroy you and take you down so that I can control you and put you under my thumb. You get this a lot in abusive relationships. You get this a lot in, in child abuse cases. Amen. Yes. So what I'm saying is defend yourself yes. with your words, yes. with prayer. God knows you are somebody. You are somebody special to God. This is the thing that I want everybody to know. You are uniquely created. Yes. 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 So anything of value is something that is rare, hard to find, or limited edition. All right. When you get into the world scope of value and monetary things, gold is valuable because you don't have a lot of it. A Rolls Royce is valuable. They only print, only build 500 of those a year. Yeah. Right. So what I'm getting at is when you have something, a Picasso painting, it's rare because it's a one of a kind. Mm -hmm. But let me explain something that's interesting about the way that the Lord created you. Mm -hmm. Do you know that there are no two people on the earth that have the same DNA? Right. Not even identical twins right. share the exact same DNA. Right. So guess what that makes you? Special. That makes you a one of a kind. Yeah. You are special. You are valuable. Mm -hmm. Say so you are so valuable. God says, I know the number of hairs on your head. Yes. Now, if you would take time to create you and put each number, well, I can't have that much, but, but still, you take time to, <laughs> take time to number the hair on your head. How special are you? So what I'm getting at is a lot of times we let people, we allow people to beat us down and we're walking around and our self-esteem has been torn down and we can't figure out why is it these people don't like me? Why do they think this about me? But the whole time you're concentrating on these people, you aren't concentrating on God and what he has for you. Right. So I'm so busy worrying about what people Jones have to say to me, say about me, that I'm not worried about what God has for me. He created me with a purpose. Before I was born in my mother's womb, each and every one of us have that purpose. And even if we lost that purpose along the way because of sin, Guess what? God is a restorer. Yes. 
He is a rebuilder. Oh, yes. He is a resurrector. Oh, yes, he is. He can bring back that dead purpose to life. Oh, yes. If only we trust in him, yes. believe in him, turn ourselves over to him. I want to talk to you last about the unintentional or the accidental murder. And this is usually what I call friendly fire. Because these are people that usually care about you, love you, and are close to you. But they just don't understand the power of their words. So that's the ones that say, oh, poor baby, you just catch me so hard. You ain't gonna never catch me. <laughs> <laughs> Had the worst luck. It just seemed like you ain't gonna never get break. So first of all, two things wrong with that statement. I rely on Jesus. I don't rely on luck. Number one. Number two, I don't need a break. I need a blessing. <laughs> so, so in a way, you're right. I'm not gonna ever have any luck or catch a break. But I will have Jesus. My Bible tells me my blessings will run me down and overtake me. And that's what I'm counting on because I believe. And I'm standing on that. I'm standing on the word. And the thing is, it also says if I seek the kingdom of God first. Do you hear what it says? It says seek. You don't say stand there and wait on God to come to you. It ain't saying for me to stand here. It's saying I got to go out and I got to look for this thing. I got to search. Where am I going to search? In his word. Yeah. Because he gave me a roadmap right here. Yeah. This tells me everything that I need right here. This is all I got to do. Yeah. But the problem is, we get distracted mm -hmm. with what the world got to say. Mm -hmm. And, oh, baby, you can't do this. You ain't going to do that. And I just feel so bad for you. And now all of a sudden you get to, yeah, I ain't going to be able to do this. Yeah. And I don't know why my luck is so bad. And I can't do none of this. And so and so is doing this. And I, I don't know why I can't preach like Pastor Bear. And God blessed him and anointed him. And the people, they don't say that I, I can't worry about none of that. And no matter what you might have to say, God didn't put me here. Well, my purpose is to be what Pastor Webb's purpose is. Thank God. Because I do not want to be a pastor. God bless you, brother. <laughs> See, we have to each find our purpose and live it out. Yes. Like the young lady um, that just became a doctor. Said your niece, it was, cousin. just became a cousin, just became a doctor. Her niece. My cousin. Your cousin. Niece. Your niece. 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 Okay. You know her niece is here somewhere. Too. All right, we got it. I'm, I got it together now. We got a cousin, two, two aunties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two, all these cousins. Oh, okay, we got a whole family up in here. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're talking about folks. I don't know. What I'm getting at is, she reached her purpose. Yeah. That was the purpose that God had for her. Yeah. And just like. I want to let you know it's not over just because you haven't reached that purpose. If you want your GED, yes. you want your high school diploma, yes. you yes. want your associates, your master's yes. degree, you want to go on to get your doctor, Jesus can breathe life back into that. Yes. Just like he called Lazarus from the dead, yes. he can call your purpose back from the dead if you just trust him. Yes. So I'm about five more minutes. And I'm going to let y'all go. We got her in service. <laughs> Told y'all I'm past the year. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm going to Jesus 
and loved us enough and thought enough of our purpose that he endured the crucifixion. And we're talking about one of the most excruciating pains that you could possibly have. So they placed the crown of thorns on his head for your purpose, for our purpose, so that it might live. They pierced him in his side for our purpose. He endured being whipped on the back to 39 lashes, even though it takes 40 to kill a person. He took 39 lashes on his back for our purpose. With each lash, it was for our purpose that it might live because he saw something special in us. We were special enough to him that he would endure this. You are somebody. No matter what the world may say, no matter what people may say, no matter what people in your own family may say about you, you are somebody to the most high, to the person that counts the most. Because if not, he would not have come down to 42 fallen generations and endured what he had to endure just for you to have the right to come back to the Father and to the family. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? God chose you before you were even thought of a conception of your mother or father, before you were formed in the womb. God knew that you were somebody. Because you were somebody, he's giving you the opportunity. If you don't know him, Take the opportunity to get to know him yeah, yeah. so that he can restore in you what's been taken away. Amen. Now, if you have a self esteem issue after hearing that message, right. come on, tell these mothers to give y'all a whooping. <laughs> So you know what, after hearing that great message from yes. Minister Ray, yes. it's also too, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. Yes. And you better finish with the Lord. Yes. You better start now, while this blood is still running warm in your veins. Yes. Surrendering yourself unto Jesus and allowing him to have the head of your life. Yes. Will you surrender yourself to him now and accept him as your Lord and Savior? Because Jesus is waiting on you. If you're coming as a candidate for baptism, if you're coming and on your Christian experience, it's now time to come unto God. As he said earlier, people can make it to the bar, you need to make it to the church. You need to give your life to Christ and surrender yourself unto him and allow him to have all the reign of your life. Make up your mind today. He will, he will, he will take care of you. Yes, he will. Is there anyone today that's going to trust God so that they like the God that doesn't know? There may be someone here today that gets a prayer. You can also talk for that too. We're here for you. God is waiting. God is waiting for you. saints. We've had a great time in God's house today. And we're going to worship God in spirit and truth. With all that being said, I still really can't let y'all go this way. I think I'm going to sing three more songs. And, uh, do that, you know, let me see y'all out a good thing. Y'all, y'all going to get yourself in trouble. Uh, you get out this early, but you know what? To God be the glory. We're going to tell a Christian story. When you leave here today, tell somebody about how good God is. Because God is a good God, a mighty God. Brother Ray, you want to dismiss it? Amen. 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 Go in peace. Go in love.